A Columbine survivor is still fighting to make it decades later. Friends are frustrated about how to help. Maybe you have an idea. Cracking down on Colorado's polluters. Our legislators going after the one polluter that we're all thinking of right now. Next is in New Hampshire tonight. We'll either witness the comeback of all comebacks or the final fizzle of a campaign that never really had a spark. Students learning how to cook, and they really hope the astronauts like it. And no, stop it. Bad human. It's not how you Colorado. And it's next. Never forgotten. We read those words on the Columbine Memorial. There's the ring of remembrance, a tribute to each life lost, and the wall of healing for each life changed. And at the very center of the memorial is that ribbon with that promise, never forgotten. It's a promise being tested today as a Columbine survivor sits homeless and alone, still fighting the medical issues that started the day that Richard Castaldo was shot. His story spread quickly through the Columbine community and got to our Steve Steger. 20 years ago, cameras followed Richard Castaldo a lot. They told the recovery story of a high school junior shot while eating lunch outside with a friend, paralyzed. 13 years later, in Los Angeles, a reporter told of a school shooting survivor about to lose his home when the bubble burst. It's nerve wracking for sure. The cameras weren't there when he was evicted, living without a home. There's no benefits for these people. You Holly Dexter you. met Castaldo last year through their advocacy. It was at a gun violence prevention rally. She noticed something was wrong. And I went to hug him and I noticed how hot he was to the touch. He went to the hospital. He was in intensive care for weeks. He um, was very sick with a MRSA infection. Now she says Castaldo is in a convalescent nursing home. He's been there for five months and they can't release him because he's homeless. Dexter is working with a group of other advocates to get him help, but they're stuck, afraid donations will make him ineligible for his government health care. He doesn't need things right now. He needs a place to live so he can be released. Dexter posted on Facebook this weekend, and the post has gone viral. She's getting a ton of messages from the Columbine community offering to help, and she is hoping his story might change the way we think about survivors of gun violence. I just see that picture of him as a 17-year-old kid with braces, and I just think, how did we fail him? You know, here he is 20 years later, and we we failed him as a society. The former principal of Columbine, Frank DeAngelis, tells me he is trying to get in touch with Richard now to try to figure out the best way to get help to him. We tried to reach out to Richard today. He never returned our phone call. I've heard from a few survivors who are concerned about him. So Holly has set up an email address for anyone who might have some way to help Richard out. It is a home for Richard at gmail.com. And Kyle, we will put that under this story on 9news.com. If you want to get in touch, it's an odd situation where they're asking for a suggestion. Not, not a donation. Not money. Not money. They, they don't want a donation. They're worried that donation could actually set him over the limit for his government health care. Mm -hmm. And so they're asking for maybe a housing suggestion. Maybe you know someone in L.A. who can help him out. Yeah, so we're just kind of putting this out there with the idea that somebody's got a connection, somebody knows the system, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who might be able to help him out because it's a really critical point right and now. And if you do, if you're watching this right now, mm -hmm. the, that email address, we'll put it up on 9news.com after the show, but it's a home for Richard at gmail.com. All right, thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. State legislators are considering raining heavier fines on the Suncor refinery the next time it rains particulates on the surrounding neighborhoods. But legislators insist their bill is not solely aimed at the metro area's most talked about polluter. Suncor may feel that all the recent scrutiny is unfair, but you know, life is unfair. Like when you live downwind from Suncor. In December, all those folks had their houses and cars covered with ash-like stuff. Suncor said that was an operational upset, basically an equipment malfunction. They said that what fell from the sky was not hazardous. The state health department said the emissions were not acceptable. The Democrats who are pushing for increased fines for Colorado's polluters were asked today if this bill is aimed at the oil refinery. There are air and water quality violations that happen throughout our state. Sure, Suncor has been in the news a lot. Sure, Suncor is at the table as we were negotiating this bill. This is not a Suncor bill. This is a Colorado bill. 
Suncor eventually apologized for dusting its neighbors with particulates, and Suncor said it would change its startup procedures, trying to avoid another one of those operational upsets. The city of Denver's ugly public breakup with private prison companies continues to be complicated. So, you know, city council kicked them to the curb and then realized that they still needed them to run Denver's halfway houses. City council has some ethical concerns about working with private prison companies. So council abruptly cut the contracts with those companies in August. That left about 500 people in community corrections scrambling for a place to go. Eventually, the city extended agreements with the companies that it spurned just to, to buy some time. And now it looks like city council is considering giving even more time to one of the companies, Core Civic, clear through the summer of 2021. Told you here that Denver wants to run its own halfway houses, but you can't just snap your fingers and make those facilities happen. Twas the night before the New Hampshire primary and all through local news, this cliche Christmas poem was being overused. Our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger, is there in Hanover, New Hampshire. And Colorado's Michael Bennett is running, even if voters are unaware. Yeah, yes and no, Kyle, because there was a voter who walked by here, looked at all these signs in front of Dartmouth College, picked out one of the few that says Bennett's name and said out loud, who's Bennett? But in his defense, earlier today, he was around people who knew who he was and he made his pitch that when they see his name tomorrow, he's hoping they'll swipe right. I've seen this script before. A couple walking a dog during a snowstorm in a quaint town. Wait a minute, this is a Hallmark rom-com. It's a long tradition. Tradition know. to get the people of New Hampshire to fall in love with you. He appeals to Republicans, independents like me, and of course, Democrats. Thank you. The he is Colorado's Democratic Senator Michael Bennett. I've been amazed at how hard it's been to go from zero to two percent. The love it's interest is the Democratic nomination for president. I love every single person who's in this room because I know you know where I am in the polls and yet you're still here. Just like you'd expect in a rom-com, what you love is hard to get. No disrespect to the Bennett campaign. I think he's actually campaigning for the vice presidency. You're not going to be able to woo everyone the day before the primary. I like Michael Bennett. I like uh, Amy Klobuchar. I like uh, uh, people in the middle. Just like these voters, Bennett is speed dating. I've spent more time in New Hampshire than any of the other candidates. For this to work out, the timing has to be right. Today, I'm going to spend most of the time um, uh, giving you a long speech. No. If only spend, he didn't spend so much time. No, nope, I'll be much briefer. Trying to be brief. So you talk a lot about Republicans. I thought you were going to say you talk a lot. <laughs> I think, honestly, the senator is a terrific candidate, I think. He has a lot to offer, I think. Um, he's not who I will support. Love stories are supposed to end happily ever after. But New Hampshire may just want to be friends. There's a role for Michael Bennett going forward. Hopefully he can continue his work in the Senate and work across party lines. I would love your vote tomorrow. I really would. I'm asking for your vote. Um, I'd love to have your vote. Bennett just finished here at Dartmouth College at a small group in front of the New Hampshire Young Democrats. It was happening at the same time uh, in Manchester, south of here, where President Trump is holding a rally. I asked Bennett earlier today about having these small group gatherings today when other candidates are in front of larger audiences. He told me this is what he's used to. He's going to continue it. He did point out, Kyle, that I missed him on Saturday. We weren't here yet. He had a rally of 450 people. I don't know if they were there for him or James Carville, who's supporting him. Take or pick. Your, your, your choice. So, Marshall, here's where I see the issue for Bennett. I think it's entirely possible that he outperforms expectations in New Hampshire, which would be encouraging for his campaign. But yet he set the bar so high, a top three finish, it's difficult to see how he reaches that even if he outperforms. We're going to be able to talk with him one-on-one -on -one tomorrow. And one of the questions, I hope he's not watching so he doesn't know ahead of time, it's like, okay, if you finish where you want to finish here or even close, what's your game for South Carolina or Nevada? Do you have a plan to move forward if you make that top three? Yeah. Well, and of course, Marshall, no trip on the campaign trail is complete without logistical hitches. And we were a little bit worried here at 9 News because your camera equipment did not make your initial flight for you and photojournalist Mike Grady. It eventually arrived. Grady is very strong because that case is extremely heavy. Uh, or so you want us to believe. I'm halfway convinced that, that you had your camera equipment all along and you just want to spend your first few hours on assignment in New England house in the chowder. I just wanted to practice my, my clam chatta voice for, yeah. for the Massachusetts native Mike Grady behind the camera right now. By the way, he had his camera. It was camera gear. He had his camera on the plane. All the bosses, he had his camera.
And that's not some camera effect behind you. Is it really that foggy? It is like pea soup there. <laughs> in the last 30 minutes, it's come in. I have no idea what this is. It's, it's rain. By now, it's rain. Wicked fog. Wicked oh, fog is what <laughs> Grady says. Wicked fog from Mike Grady behind the camera. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, may I make a recommendation? This is where we uh, point you towards something that did not come from 9 News, but I do think is worth your time. I don't know if you saw, but there was a scary moment during the CU Stanford basketball game over the weekend. Players collided, and the Stanford player's head hit the court hard. I'm telling you, the guy who, who felt worse about it was Evan Betty, the, the CU player who collided with Oscar uh, De Silva. And it led to this incredible moment at half court where the players from both sides huddled together to say a prayer. It appeared it was both for the injured player and for the distraught guy who accidentally knocked him to the floor. Andy Katz wrote about that moment that he saw as going beyond sportsmanship. And Katz said it came at a time when, quote, there is definitely a need for more of it on a daily basis. You can read Andy Katz's piece for NCAA.com through a link on the next Facebook page. A video being circulated by Car Colorado Parks and Wildlife workers today is the perfect example of how not to Colorado. I did. Hi. You want to try? Hey. Num num. Mm, num num no. No. Deer do not belong in living rooms. A woman in Evergreen got a ticket for luring deer into her house where she fed them bananas and cereal which is not what deer eat. If you're thinking this is just one person who decided to turn their place into a petting zoo, Parks and Wildlife says a dozen people were caught doing this in the last month alone. They remind us to remind you, where deer go, so go predators. Something tells me Karen wouldn't sound so chipper if she found a mountain lion crouching in her china hutch. Colorado has found the snow that we were missing through January, which has our meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen feeling poetic again. Corey Reppenhagen is on the weather beat. Day in, day out, snow. Winter in Colorado. Stock that milk and bread. That was Corey Reppenhagen on the weather beat. School is out for the day. Let's get cooking. There's tomatoes, coriander seeds, uh, garlic, and what else is it? Ginger. They're making meals for a kind of captive audience. And this guy. He isn't snow blowing his entire backyard, is he? That's next. go again a little glimpse of the sun today a little bit of a break in the past 24 hours and another round of snow tonight our high today at 30 far cry from the average of 45 we'll get back there it's going to take a couple of days we've got snow developing across the metro area but the heaviest snow will fall between now and midnight winter weather advisory for denver through 2 a.m we start to see improving conditions later on tonight and the heaviest snow will fall in this winter storm warning zone south of pueblo down to the new mexico line four to eight inches of snow there for Denver, it'll be in the two to five inch range with about three and a half here in the city. The storm will be long gone by the morning drive, but the snow on the ground will make for a slow go tomorrow. We do see improving conditions after midnight with drier air working in. The snow continues through the mid morning time period over southern Colorado. In Denver for tonight, winter weather advisory two to five inches of snow, low 12, with clearing towards sunrise. Highs tomorrow in the mid 30s with lots of sunshine. A 20% chance of snow on Wednesday. A warming trend for Thursday and for Valentine's Day. A beautiful weekend and maybe a little more snow for the holiday on Monday. Thank you, Kathy. The most Colorado thing we saw today, and we have seen a bunch ever since it snowed late last week, but it's this guy snow blowing his backyard. Why exactly would one snow blow their backyard? Well, apparently, when your backyard has a luge run in it, you have to make a path for the luge. That is awesome, and that is genius. Jackie sent us this video from up in Silver Th Silverthorn. Send us the most Colorado things you see. Email photos and videos to next at 9news.com or give me a shout with the hashtag HeyNext. Imagine being stuck in a tiny tube with your coworkers for weeks on end. The least you'd want is decent food. Seems like a pretty big challenge to give to high schoolers, but they seem confident. 
And is this a sign of the obvious? Next. Did you have to take a cooking class in high school? I did. Home economics. Learn how to make chicken French. Would have been a lot more interesting if we got to make astronaut food. That's what kids are cooking up at Cherry Creek High School. Here's Lori Lizarraga. Um, there's tomatoes, coriander seeds, uh, garlic, and what else is there? Ginger. On Thursday nights when school is out and these kids could be anywhere, they don their white coats and cook for hours. Like, we, like first day I got here, we were already cooking. 14 and 15 year olds cooking is impressive on its own, but they're not just cooking. Yeah, I would say maybe barely any of those. They're like, perfecting a meal that could go into orbit. Like if their dish wins at competition, NASA will send it into space aboard the International Space Station for astronauts to eat. So the idea of being able to combine cooking and then science, which is one of my favorite things, and also space, which is really cool, is just cool. The program is called Hunch. High schools united with NASA to create hardware. And it really is cool. The number one reason that they're all kind of here and that they all come together to do this is curiosity. Mary Anderson is a STEAM teacher in the Cherry Creek School District. She's been running the program for four years. Um, we're fostering that curiosity in order to build a generation of innovators. She'll be the first to say the program itself is amazing, but she talks even more about how blown away she is by the students. They're not science buffs or professional chefs. I feel like we're going to do amazing. But in here, these teenagers are literally shooting for the stars. NASA is trusting us to make food for them. It's kind of amazing. And getting closer with every stir. For next, I'm Lori Lizarraga. <laughs> that hunch team competes this week, and the top 10 teams get to visit the NASA space station in Houston. When we return, a sign that suggests they think we're idiots, and your feedback, which often suggests you think I am, next. It's a sign, seemingly of the obvious. Snow, it says. Well, you don't say, huh? This is spotted on the gates of Alberti Park in Denver. Even kind of looks like the, the fence is making an arrow. Like, look, look, there it is, everybody. There's the snow. The city says this is a remnant of a full sign that said, no snow here. But the rest blew away in the snowstorm. They're trying to keep the gates clear of snow so they can open and close them. A number of you wrote in tonight about Columbine survivor Richard Cataldo, who's currently homeless, alone, and facing health challenges in California, and the efforts by some friends of his to get him help. Shirley wrote, Thank you for caring. Thank you for being clear on how to help. Please keep us informed on the outcome. We will. And if anybody wants that contact information for the folks helping him in California, it's in this article on 9news.com. Melissa writes in about the deer being lured to the house. She says, I hope one of those deer goes bat excrement crazy and destroys the home. No, 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 that's, that's, that's not fair. We don't want that. We just want people to stop trying to domesticate big game.